everybody, that was a nice way to start our session of teaching in Romans 8 with some praise and worship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Kim Rocks, and today we are going to go through the Bible and look at Romans 8 and 10. So please join me. All right. You know, if you have your Bibles with you, or, or if you don't, it's a good time to get them out. We want to open our Bibles and just start reading in the Word. And um, I'm going to put my glasses on here. Let's see here. Uh, I want to start in Romans 10. And this is, this is a powerful chapter. And this is going to be uh, introducing... Um, what it means, how you're saved, and then we're, ne- we're going to go into what it means to be led by the Spirit and what the law means with all of that. So Romans 10. Dear brothers and sisters, the longing of my heart and my prayers to God is for the people of Israel to be saved. I know what enthusiasm they have for God, but it is misdirected zeal. For they don't understand God's way of making people right with himself. Refusing to accept God's way, they cling to their own way of getting right with God by trying to keep the law, which we know every single day we're really unable to keep the law. Without Jesus, we we pretty much are, are, uh, the Bible says we are like filthy rags before him. For Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all who believe in him are made right with God. Salvation is for everyone. People, salvation is for everyone. But you have to make a choice. You have to choose Jesus to be your savior. For Moses writes that the law's way of making a person right with God requires obedience of all its commands, all its commands. But faith's way of getting right with God says, don't say in your heart, who will go up to heaven to bring Christ down to earth? And don't say, who will go down to the place of the dead to bring Christ back to life again? In fact, it says, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now that scripture is worth reading again. So if you're listening to me today, just know that God has prepared your heart to respond to him as your personal savior. And today is the day and now is the time of salvation. This is what the word of God teaches us. And what this is saying is if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord, if you're not saved, if you don't know if you're saved, you can declare with me right now, Jesus Christ is my Lord and savior. Jesus Christ is Lord. And believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. And you know, you can just believe by faith. God is faithful. So we can pray for more faith too if you're struggling to believe. I pray that right now, Father, in Jesus' name, through the power of the Holy Spirit, if anybody out there is struggling with unbelief, with a lack of faith, Lord, that you would give them the faith that they need to receive your Son as their personal Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what he came here for, was to be your personal Savior, so that we can walk out a perfected life in eternity and with him, God with us here on earth. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. It's by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. It's not by our acts. It's, 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 not, by our, um, it's not by the law. Although God, he loves us enough to change us from the inside out to be more like his son, but he changes us over time from glory to glory. He begins to work on our heart. 
our, our motives, our desires, our thoughts. You know, we have the mind of Christ with Jesus. And that is a powerful thing to know that we have the mind of Christ. We can have wisdom. And the Bible also says if you need more wisdom, you can pray and ask God for that. Those, those are two things that he promises. They are promises in the Bible that he will give you more faith and he will give you more wisdom. So, for it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. So today, I celebrate with you if you did that. That means that the angels are rejoicing in heaven along with us, that that you've been saved. You have been saved. So let's talk about some things that, that the Bible says about being saved. Let's talk about how God's Spirit will help you overcome sin. So you, you're, we're still um, walking out this earth. We, we are still sinners, and we need God's help for all of that. We need his help in the transition of life and um, how to be obedient and how to be better Christians. So it says, this powerful message contains important truths about letting the Holy Spirit lead us. The Apostle Paul makes four key points here. One, if you're taking notes, I love to take notes. You can get out a notebook and a pen, and and let's go through some notes here. So number one on how God's Spirit will help you overcome sin. We are controlled by a new nature. If you accepted Christ as your personal Savior, we are controlled by a new nature. Our old sinful nature will still try to get a hang, a hand on the steering wheel. It'll still try to get a hand on the steering wheel, our old, our old sinful nature. But now our new nature is in the driver's seat. And our old nature has become like an annoying backseat driver. We can either give in to our old nature's nagging and bad directions, or we can ignore it and let, the, and let the Holy Spirit direct our paths. So we can, ignore the, we can ignore our old sinful nature. And you can begin listening to the Holy Spirit to direct your paths. And the way that that can happen is by getting into your word. This is a, this is a Bible I like to, to travel with. It's not my, my Bible at home. I have a, a, um, a, a favorite one that I was able to get not too long ago by the grace of God. It's a beautiful burgundy Bible with um, gold lettering on it. And it has, it's a study Bible and I, I just love it. But that is how you can learn the Holy Spirit's voice is through the word of God. The gospel truth, this is absolute truth. Truth does not change, and that's why it's stable, and it's a solid ground. It's a firm foundation to stand on. Truth does not change. So um, how you're going to get familiar with the Holy Spirit's voice is through the Word of God, and you want to be reading it every day. Open your Bibles and begin reading. That is the only way to get familiar with God's voice. Even though we will face physical death, we will not face spiritual death. For believers, physical death is simply a transition to eternal life in heaven. We have been spared from spiritual death, which leads to everlasting torment in hell. And and you can read in uh, Revelation 21, 8 about that. Uh, This important fact should reassure us when the devil tries to throw doubts our way. The same Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead resides in us. Once you accept Christ as your personal Savior, the Holy Spirit becomes, comes in and lives within us. So God is with us. Did you catch that? The Holy Spirit who had the power to raise Jesus from the dead now lives in us. It, if that is indeed true, and God's word says it is, it's the gospel truth, just think of the supernatural power we now have to resist sin. 
And, uh, you know, um, God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit within us can begin to make immediate changes in us, in the way that we think and um, what we want to do. Our, our behaviors will begin to change. You know, God has an, as an adventure for you, a, a journey. He, he's got a, a powerful adventure for you. He has a plan and a purpose for your life, and he loves you, and he wants you to know him, and, and for, for to him, to, he wants to see you spending time with him and getting to know him. We do not have to give in to our sinful nature and urges. I'm going to move my water bottle here. I just had a drink a minute ago. We do not have to give in to our sinful nature and urges. Paul wasn't talking about New Year's resolutions here, which, you know, uh, anybody that's made a New Year's resolution, it doesn't take long for those to kind of fade out of our lives. If we try to live a morally upright, godly life in our own strength, we will fail and usually fail miserably. But if we rely on the power of the Holy Spirit to help us, we will be overcomers. So you can rely on the power of the, of the Holy Spirit to help so that you can be an overcomer. Now let's see here. One thing I, I wanted to discuss is um, sometimes believers, we, we don't know how to pray. And I want to talk about how prayer is not a solitary experience. Have you ever wondered what to say to God when you pray? Sometimes I have. You know, I hear people say really amazing prayers, and I think, I wish I could pray like that. But but God wants you to be yourself. He wants to have a relationship with you. So he just wants you to be yourself. Um, There's no shame with God. He already knows everything about you. He knows what you did yesterday. He knows what you are doing today. He knows what's going to happen for the rest of the day. He knows your tomorrows, and he loves you. So he's, you know, he is, he's, um, this is all about, prayer is, it's just about your personal communication with God. And you can always ask God for your, for forgiveness of your sins. He's faithful to forgive us. As far as the east is from the west. So let's see. Perhaps you have a sick friend um, whom you don't know how to pray for. Or maybe you are unsure of how to pray for your own spiritual needs. Let this passage of scripture encourage you. From the moment you asked Jesus to be your personal Lord and Savior, you received a resident guest in your heart, the Holy Spirit. Yes, you did. You received him into your heart. He lives there now, like we've been saying. One of the many things the Holy Spirit does is to help us in prayer. Especially when we don't know what to pray. As we realize how intimately God is involved in our prayers, we begin to feel a unique closeness to our Father in heaven. We may even discover a freshness in our prayer lives that we never had before. The next time you don't know what to pray for, ask the Holy Spirit to help you voice your concerns and your needs, he is standing ready to help you. He's ready to help you. Now, let's see. Let's look at some of the other nuggets here that we can pull away from these truths. Um, I want to read something out of Romans 8. And this is Romans um, 8, 28. See if I can, there we go. And the Holy Spirit, starting in verse 26, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows that the, knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. 
And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called and are called according to his purpose for them. That's a really amazing scripture. <clears throat> And I would encourage you to open your Bible and read, read into that for yourself. Read that whole chapter. And this is in Romans 8, and it starts in verse 26, and it's 27 and 28. <clears throat> Excuse me. For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters, and having chosen them he called them to come to him and having called them he gave them right standing with himself and having given them right standing he gave them his glory hallelujah he he gives us his glory now let's see here so what we want to do is we we want to live to please god Living to please God may seem like a daunting task for some, and it is. They struggle to live up to the list of do's and don'ts. They try to to obtain God's favor through acts of kindness and compassion. You know, people, we we try all kinds of things to, to gain God's favor. We attempt to appease God for our sinful behavior by going to church or making a confession But this passage, in fact, this entire chapter in Romans, lets us know that it is possible to live a life that is pure and pleasing to God. It is power. It is possible through the power of the Holy Spirit. The beginning verses of Romans 8 explain that once we enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ, God frees us from the power of sin and death through the power of his Holy Spirit. This terminology illustrates the basis of our freedom. In essence, the Holy Spirit we received by accepting Jesus Christ into our lives has made us slaves of Jesus Christ. We are no longer slaves to our sinful nature. And I I think that's interesting how Paul chooses to use that word about being slaves that we are slaves to Jesus Christ and we are no longer a slave to our sinful nature. And um, if you've ever struggled with anything in your life, any type of, um, you know, our, our addictions, um, traumas, the things that we do that we just wish we didn't anymore, sometimes, you know, you're mean. Maybe, maybe you're being a, a mean person out there. You're bitter. You have unforgiveness in your heart. That causes us to act out in a certain way, but, but we can be changed. We can walk out our lives in, in a different way with the, the joy of the Lord and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, compassion, joy, comfort, long-suffering, and peace. You know, uh, the Lord offers us a peace that surpasses understanding. I I want that kind of peace. I love that kind of peace with Jesus. I let that guide my life, and it helps me live a contented life, which I think is super, super important, because in in this day and age, it's very easy to be discontented with life, and I think it's good just to, to slow down and simplify your life. You know, uh, I, I feel like the Lord is wanting you to understand that we don't have to be so busy. God gives us this day, and this day sets up tomorrow, and yesterday set up today. So uh, be present in, in this day with the Lord. Sometimes we have interruptions that we think, oh my gosh, that was the last thing that I needed to have happen today. And that is going to put me in a, in a certain kind of mood or, you know, now I'm going to act poorly to the next person because of this interruption. But just uh, take it all in stride. Smile. Give it to God. Um, pray for his grace and his mercy. And let him come and help you, help you um, be a different kind of person. Somebody that responds with joy 
and patience and kindness. It's very hard to do sometimes. The Apostle Paul often identified himself as a slave of Jesus Christ in his writings. He used the word doulos, which means servant by choice. So we can think about that as a slave to Jesus Christ and no longer to our sins. Um, we're serving him by choice. And that's what, that's what we're here to do every day is um, because we're the body of Christ, we're walking out his examples We're his hands, his feet, his voice, his thoughts. Um, We're the body of Christ. The church is the body of Christ, and we represent him. So that's how we can express his love to people. Let let people know they're loved. Be a vessel of love. Let, Let the Lord use you as a vessel of love. So it says, a doulos, or bond servant, was a slave who had been granted was granted freedom by his master. But it's somebody who loved his master so deeply that he voluntarily chose to, to continue on as that master's servant. Likewise, Paul was not a slave to Christ because he had to be. It wasn't because he had to be. He was a slave to Christ because he wanted to be. That was his choice. He had an experience with, the, with Jesus on the road to Damascus. And from there forward, he was forever changed and eternally changed. And um, he wanted to serve Christ for the rest of his life. He had totally surrendered himself to his master. Everyone is effectively effectively a slave to someone or something. Why not be a voluntary slave to Jesus? He's the best master you could ever have. Because he loves you, he loves you with an everlasting love. He loves you with an everlasting love. That's what Jeremiah 31, 3 says. You can look that up if you want. It means he loves you forever. It's an everlasting love that Jesus loves you with. And... That today, I, I, want to, I want to leave us with that thought today that um, how much he loves you. He, he loves you enough that he came to this earth. He, he walked out the, his life as a human being without sin. And then he did, um, he, he chose to die for us. He chose to die for our sins so that we could be eternally saved. And you know, um, he rose again on the third day, and that's what, what Easter is all about, that, that he, it's the resurrection day. So I want to tell you, happy resurrection day. I pray that you have received the Lord today, if you haven't. And if you have, I pray that you will begin to walk closer to him. Carve out your day, a, a time that you can spend with the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to spend time with you. There's things that um, he wants you to know and understand and get familiar with his voice through the Bible, the gospel truth. Let's get, let's get familiar with the Lord and the Holy Spirit that resides in you. And um, that's the power of God in our lives. That's how God is with us. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit who resides in us because Jesus Christ died for us and rose again on the third day. So happy Resurrection Day. God bless you and... If you don't have a, a church to attend to, the Bible talks about being in fellowship. So, so don't dismiss fellowship. Uh, to, this Sunday is a good day to go to your neighborhood church, go to your, your old church, go to your current church, go to a new church. Listen to where the Lord might be prompting you to, to go to church this weekend. He, he might be planting a thought right now that, that I want you to go here this weekend, son or daughter, and be obedient to that. Bring your family, bring your friends, bring your neighbors, and go go enjoy Resurrection Day and go enjoy the presence of the Lord in fellowship with the body of Christ. You, your, your life is always today and forward. Tomorrow isn't promised. So live for today and be prepared. Be, be prepared for your future by today and just know that God loves you wholly and completely and forever. In Jesus' name, I ask and pray, Father, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.